Hello, and we're back, Aldo Figueroa here. What I've done so far, I set up my scene. So if you don't have this scene set up, go back and watch the first video uh, so that you could see how I was able to set up this very simple scene. So what I want to do right now, let's go over some of our settings for the rendering. Uh, I'm going to click on this little icon right here, or it's the same as going into Windows, Rendering Editors, and we want to go into the render setup. I'm sorry, not render center, <laughs> setup, <laughs> render settings, excuse me. And within this window here that opens up, uh, we want to make sure that rendering using is set to Maya software. I want to go ahead and do that right now. And if I scroll down, I want to change under the image size. I just want to look at the image, the preset. I would just want to point out that for right now, I'm just going to select HD 540. It's a relatively small uh, resolution, but for this demonstration, it's going to render out really fast. You could always go larger, but do take in, keep in consideration the larger the resolution, the longer it w may take to render out your current frame. What I want to go ahead and also do under the Maya software, let's go ahead and just up the quality. Instead of using custom quality, I'm going to go ahead and select production quality. And so that we also get the best type of uh, shadows and calculations for our rendering, let's go ahead and turn on ray tracing under the ray tracing quality tab. And I'm going to go ahead and turn ray tracing on. We'll, we might have to come back in here to change the bias so that we get a little bit more better details, but we'll go there uh, in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and close this window down. And at this point, we still do not have a light. If I go ahead and click on this render button right here, notice that it takes a little bit more time. And But we see this light. Uh, don't worry about this error that I'm getting on my file and on my scene. Hopefully, you don't get that. I'm going to close this window. Let's go ahead in the Create menu. Well, let's go to Lights. And let's go ahead and tear off this menu. I want to go over some of these lights. I'll probably just go over one light per video so that you can always go to the specific video. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and start off with the ambient light. I'm going to select the option box. Each one of these do have their own options. In this one, there's settings for intensity, how bright the light's going to be, the color of the light, if it's going to have some ambient shade, the value, and if it's going to cast shadows. But these are things we can also change after the fact. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create. And right now, I have an object that is at the origin axis. I'm going to select this sphere, and I'm just going to move it to the side. Since I already have my outliner open over here, and if you do not have your outliner, I'm going to let me go ahead and uh, not just minimize it. Let me go ahead and close it. If I go to Window, and then select Outliner, it might you might have your outliner in a floating window. I like moving this outliner into the left side of my interface by just clicking on it and dropping it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my ambient light. And this light, all your objects are created at the origin axis. I'm going to go ahead and raise it up. Now this is going to be an opportunity for us to see uh, a couple of different settings within the interface. Previously, I showed you for press 4, you get the wireframe mode. If you press 5, you get the shader mode. Now, uh, if we had some textures uh, and shaders, you could press 6, but we, we, we do not have any textures. But if you press 7, you now have the lighted mode. Now, check out what happens. Because of this light, the ambient light, which is set to 1, let's go ahead and render it and see what we got. I'm going to go ahead and click on this button right here, render the current frame. With ambient light, depending on how high it sets, it is, it is set, it has a potential of being able to uh, flat, flatten out your scene. But I want to change some of these settings. I'm going to leave this window open. And I'm actually going to switch to the Attribute Editor. Right now, because my light is already selected, either in the Outliner or in my scene, 
We can change the intensity. Let's go ahead and drop the intensity. I'm going to go about halfway. And you could click on this button right here. This is going to update your current frame. So we have that. What you're also able to do, there's also this uh, ambient shade. I'm going to go ahead and drop this as well to see what this looks like. Let me go ahead and bring this back up to 1. I'm going to render it. So you can see the settings, how they change. Let's go back up. It was at 0.5, so we could see uh, the difference. As you increase the shade, you can see how it gets a little bit darker on the edges. Now, if you increase this intensity too much and you render it out, you see how it gets really bright. If you drop the ambient shade, re-render this entire setting, you're seeing basically <laughs> your spheres have disappeared. So I don't want to do that. What happens if I increase this ambient shade now to all the way to 1? Well, let's find out. So now we get something like this. So there's lots of different settings that you're able to explore as you're working with these lights. But this is the ambient shade. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop this right here. Now there is an option to have shadows. And I could tell it to use ray trace shadows. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. And you can see it's creating some shadows. But if you also notice right here, it has some a really hard edge. I believe we should be able to reduce that by going into our render settings. In this case, since we have the render view open, we have yet another area that we could select. I'm just lining these up so you can see. This button right here, it, this little slate with the gear, this is the render settings, which is also right here, which is also within your file menu under Windows Rendering Editors Render Settings. I'm going to click on it right here. And under the Maya Software tab, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go into the ray tracing qualities. And I'm just going to slightly bump this up to about 2. And let's see what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and click on this button to update it. You can see it's getting better for this one. I'm going to bump it up some more, about 3. And you can see it's gotten even, uh, even more better. Let me show you a different option. I'm just going to bump this up a little bit more, about to 5. Another option is if you only want to render out an area, what you're able to do with your mouse, I'm going to click and drag to make a marquee selection. So this is now a, an area that is highlighted. This time I want to press this button right here. This is the render region. This is only going to render out the place that you have selected. So for this light, I'm going to render this region. I'm just going to increase it until I get rid of those weird shapes. But really for this light though, I should I should have mentioned that uh, maybe I don't want shadows on this one. Uh, I just want to be able to use this light, this ambient light, because I want to be able to create uh, a smooth area. This light works really well with other lights. And we're going to check that. Uh, we don't, we'll continue with this one. We're still about eight, uh, nearly nine minutes in. What I want to do for right now, I'm going to close this window. I'm going to close this window as well. And I'm going to temporarily hide the ambient shade. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut, which is Control H, or which is under Display, Hide. Height selection. So right now the ambient light is selected. I'm going to hide it. Notice what happens. We turn, we hit this light. Your entire scene goes black because I press seven on my keyboard. If you press five, it goes back to the shaded mode. If you press seven, it goes to the light modes, but we don't have any lights. I'm going to go ahead and create a directional light. Let's go to the option box. I am going to tell it to have an intensity. Right now it's set to one. Color is uh, white light. I'm going to cast shadows. Shadow color is black. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create. Now, this directional light, this light creates parallel lights uh, similar to uh, parallel rays of light similar to what you see on the sun. For this one, 
what I like to do, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. I like to place this light in the location of where it's pointing light towards. For example, I want this light. Now, first, if you notice for this icon, it actually has these little arrows that point to the direction where the light is heading. And notice how on my scene, because I have the light mode turned on, 7 on my keyboard, only half of these spheres are lit up. I'm going to switch to my uh, rotate tool, E on my keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and just point these downward. And now you can see how your scene is changing. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of position my camera. With my directional light turned on, uh, we are going to, I want to examine shadows. Right now, it has what is called depth map shadows turned on. Let's see what those look like. I'm going to go ahead and render this current frame. And what we get are the shadows that aren't too impressive. Uh, depth map shadows are uh, less computer intensive, but they don't offer the same qualities as ray trace shadows. Uh, they can potentially render out faster, but I want to use the higher quality ones. So in order to turn on high, higher quality shadows for this light, I have to make sure, let me close this window, I have to make sure that my directional light is selected. And I could either do this in the channel box under the directional light shape, under depth map shadows. Right now it's turned on. I could turn it off, or if I scroll down, I could see that there's also ray trace shadows. In Maya, you could only typically only use ray trace shadows or depth map shadows. It doesn't like to use both of them. Or you could also tell them no shadows, uh, but I want ray trace shadows. Let's go ahead and re-render this scene again. And you could see that now we have these nice crisp, crisp shadows here. Since we have this one directional light, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just resize this window just a bit so that we could see this. I have the directional light selected. I'm going to move this window so I could see it. Depending on its rotation, you will get a different result. Now, I did move my camera, so that's why it's in a different location. If I point it straight, straight, uh, going pointing straight to my uh, floor plane, you get kind of like a direct light from overhead. So, but notice one of the things. I'm going to go ahead and point it, point it right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And let me go ahead and update my current frame. Notice on the back side how it's really dark. There is no reflection of the light down here. So this is where, let's bring back our ambient light. I'm going to press, I'm going to select it. You could either go into Windows, I'm sorry, into Display, Show, Show Selection, or the keyboard shortcut, Shift H. So I'm going to go ahead and move this light just a little bit lower. And let's see what it looks like with both of these lights. What I want to do, I want to lower the intensity of that light. But I like that this uh, these other areas are now lit as well. So with my ambient light selected, let me go ahead and drop the intensity. And maybe I'm going to get rid of the ambient shade. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see. I, I want the, the shadows to be darker, so I'm going to have to work with some of these settings. So I could leave this window open. And let's see. If I tr drop that to zero, I'm curious. So this. Basically, light is completely off. If I move it up to just point 0.2 and render it. Let's see, if I increase this ambient shade to, to 1. 
Now we can see some of the interesting things that are happening. Let's go ahead and hide this light again. And control H. I'm gonna re I'm gonna only render out a, a smaller area this time just to see what it looks like. I'm gonna de deselect it. You can see the slight changes. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back, select it, and shift H. Render. So it's able to render out some of those uh, different areas. Let's see if I bring this back up to to point w or to one, and render it out again. For this one, it is creating a light in the center. So I don't want to change the ambient shade down to zero because it makes everything washed out. So there are different settings definitely to explore. So these were the combination of these two different lights. Uh, you do not need to use these two lights together, but you can see uh, through experimenting with these different lights, you're able to create different scenes. What I want to do, we still have some more lights uh, to work with, but I want us to go ahead and stop this video, and we're going to continue looking at the other lights, point light, spotlight, area light, and volume light in, in the next videos. So I'll see you in the next video.